What is up YouTube? Token Talk Tuesday is back in action and today we're talking about ERC20 tokens. We're talking about what they are, why they're important, and how they're created. So let's go ahead and hash it out. So guys, I'm sure you've heard the term ERC-20, and again, I'm sure you're wondering what that even means. ERC-20 is just a set of standard smart contract functions that a given token must utilize to be classified as an Ethereum ERC-20 token. And this standard was designed to ensure that all Ethereum-based tokens were on a standardized set of rules for creation, exchange, transfer, and even sometimes storage of these different tokens and being part of this same standard means that all ERC-20 tokens are directly interchangeable based off of their value in Ether. So if you think about a parent-child relationship, Ether is pretty much the parent to all of these basic attention tokens. They're all valued based on Ether. So basic attention token is worth a fraction of Ether and Gollum is worth a fraction of Ether. And while they, they have their own value in that way, everything sort of tracks back to Ether. So you can think of Ethereum as sort of that, that parent host for all of these different tokens. Now the ERC-20 token standard was absolutely crucial in making Ethereum the ecosystem that it is today with all these different custom applications, these new projects that use Ethereum as their base. I know we've mentioned basic attention token quite a bit on this channel and even in this video. But that's one that uses Ethereum sort of as its infrastructure. Um, you can look at things like Gollum and Augur and Geonosis. They all have these amazing products and projects that they built with a token standard on Ethereum. So they're all ERC-20 tokens and that means that you can exchange them with one another pretty much freely. So anytime that you want to get one ERC-20 token, you can exchange it for another with very little friction. It's super, super simple to do. What this token standard did is it created the ability for Ethereum to become this open application development ecosystem that it was intended to be from the beginning. Ethereum really, in my opinion, was never created to be a competitor for Bitcoin, but rather it was intended to be the infrastructure on which many different projects sprouted and it's been successful in that way. Now, one important thing to note here, the topic of fungibility comes up quite a bit when you talk about different tokens on the Ethereum blockchain, and I'm gonna explain that to you really quickly here. ERC-20 tokens are all fungible, meaning one, different, one token can always be exchanged for one of the like kind, one-to-one -one directly. And what that means is, is that one basic attention token is always gonna equal one basic attention token. Each different unit of an asset has the exact same value. So when you look at fungibility, that's all it is. It means that one asset can be exchanged directly for another at the same value and the same unit. Now, if you look at something like a collector's item, that isn't the case. One trading card in a different condition could be much more valuable than another that's exactly the same, but in a different condition, that's a non-fungible asset. So all ERC-20 tokens are fungible and they're also almost all divisible into certain fractions but you can customize that in the ERC-20 token standard. Now, ERC-20 tokens such as Gollum, Geonosis, Basic Attention Token, etc., they're all value based on Ether, as we mentioned before. And that means they can all be exchanged with one another sort of on this open Ethereum blockchain with relative frictionlessness. However, it doesn't mean that just by being an ERC-20 token, a token has value. And we've talked about value on this channel a fair amount. I'll link one of my videos about how to value cryptocurrency above, but just being an ERC-20 token does not assign a token value. It's really about a lot of other things when you start talking about how much a coin is worth. And it's actually really easy to make an ERC-20 token, and I can show you guys that here if you'd really like, because I think it'd be a cool exercise for all of you to find out how simple it really is, even if you have no development background, no software development background to make an ERC-20 token of your own. So if you're interested in that, leave me a comment below and say, you know, I'm interested in making my own ERC-20 token or something. Even if you just comment ERC-20, that's cool with me. Now the ERC-20 token standard is probably one of the main reasons why Ethereum has had relative success over the last year to two years, even beyond that. And I will say though, it's not without its flaws. There have been so many instances where ERC-20 token contracts have been hacked. There have been things that have happened. It's evolved over time and it's gotten better. 
However, there are now new standards that are being proposed to replace the RC20 token standard that are more secure, a little bit better, and just kind of overall improve on the old standard. And one of those is ERC223. I'll make a video about that, telling you kind of about what the differences are and what the benefits are there. So guys, I hope this was a good little quick explainer about ERC20 tokens and just in general helped you understand why they're so important to the Ethereum ecosystem and maybe just understand what type of tokens you're even holding in the first place. So thank you so much for watching. Please check out some of the other videos. I'll link them here. I have so much good content on my channel. And again, if you aren't subscribed already, please do. I have videos coming out every single week, like one, two, three, maybe even four videos a week. And I'm so excited to have you guys here. Thanks so much. Cheers.